Good evening, everybody. Uh, we have a, a real good treat for you guys tonight. So my friend, my friend and fishing buddy, Vic Robaw, is going to be taking the lead tonight. And I think this spruce moth is really uh, interesting because it's a very, very effective fly. And I'm really interested in learning how to tie it. So Dick, take it away. It's all yours. OK, uh, Sherry said there's some new folk on. Uh, and asked me if I'd just say a little about my background. I grew up fishing the rivers and lakes of Western Montana. I was taught to fish and tie flies by Dan Bailey. Many of you will know him, a very famous gentleman who owned a fly shop in Livingston, Montana. He was a family friend. Um, so I've been, I've been tying flies for 70 years uh, since I was a little kid. Um, I live in the winter. I live in Oregon in a suburb of Portland called Lake Oswego. Uh, and half the year I live on the Madison River in Montana. When I retired, my wife and I built a log home on the Madison River. Sherry has been there and a number of other folks in the guild uh, come over there to fish the rivers and lakes around Yellowstone every summer. So the two flies that I'm going to um, tied tonight probably are not well known to people. Uh, one of them, the first one, the spruce moth pattern, was ridiculously difficult to tie when it was first invented by uh, a guy named Dan Delecta, who owns a fly shop on the Madison River down closer to Ennis. Dan's a very good tire, and it was a very good pattern, but it was ridiculously uh, complex. Uh, I note recently that he has stopped tying it that way. <laughs> he has simplified it. And uh, I did the same. I did it a little differently than he did. But its origin is as a spruce moth pattern uh, for the Madison River. Those spruce moths occur in, in many places. Uh, in Montana on the Madison, they hatch in late August, early September. Uh, they are terrestrial. They are not an aquatic insect. They, uh, I've got a little blurb here about them. Let me put that up. Uh, they're actually a parasite and they feed on Douglas fir, subalpine fir, and Engelman spruce trees. And in that regard, they're a pest. Uh, they actually can destroy trees. They have one generation a year. And as I say, uh, it's like mid to late August or sometimes into September. They end up in the river the same way hoppers do. That is, they, they're a terrestrial and they blow onto the river uh, whenever the wind is blowing. And they're a very large bug. Uh, the fish go crazy when they start hitting the water. And uh, so when you're over in that territory at that time, you really need a spruce moth pattern. Uh, when the bugs on the surface, they struggle just the way a hopper would. And so sometimes when you fish it, you can jerk it around and slap it down on the water and, you're, and that's going to really attract uh, the fish. So uh, Dan calls this pattern the twisted sister. It's got two wings on it. The original pattern had three. No fly needs three wings, believe me. Um, so this is the way we're gonna tie it. Uh, as you can see there, the hook, a TM code 2310, which is a 2X long, or a 200R, which is 3X long, will work very well in size 10. Tonight, I'm gonna be tying with a 200R. It's a little heavier hook than the 2310, but this is a big fly with a lot of goodies on it and you have no trouble floating it, trust me. I'm gonna be using a UTC 140 denier rusty brown thread. We'll have some copper wire in it, a little bit of dark deer hair, and I wanna show you that in a minute because uh, that's an important part of this. It's going to be a body hackle that we will be brown and palmered. Uh, the original 
had a, a thin skin wing. We're, we're dumping that sucker. Uh, it's got a bullet head and uh, it's done with brown trigger point fibers. Uh, the one in the picture is actually uh, kind of a cream color. I've switched to brown because the wings actually are kind of dark. The head is going to be, uh, was originally a dark brown foam strip. I'm going to show you a slightly different one tonight. Works better. It's got brown rubber legs on it. And it's got a thorax of brown ice dubbing or something similar to that. So now let's look at the materials. Um, on the right hand side, you see a, a saddle. It's a brown uh, whiting saddle uh, hackle. Uh, next to it on the left, you see foam strips, or you see brown foam, and we're going to cut that into strips, and I'm going to tell you about that a little bit later when we actually get tying the fly. Then look at the deer hair. It's got that variegated brown and black color to it. comes off the back of the deer, and that color is what we want because of the variegated colors in the, in the wing of a spruce fly. The thorax is going to be ice dubbing, but of a particular kind. Uh, you can see this one, it's, it's called fine flash dubbing. Ice dubbing is notoriously difficult to spin uh, and dub onto a thread. This fine dubbing uh, is much easier to work with, and I'll show you the package when we get there. We're gonna have a little copper wire on it below the ice dubbing there. And we're gonna have uh, some rubber legs on it. These happen to be brown and black variegated color. And then you see the uh, wing material. And in the picture, I've got the, the tan, but um, I'm actually gonna be using a darker brown tonight because I think it's a little better uh, imitation of the color. So that's, that's the, the program. Uh, let's go back now and uh, I need to, I need to exit. Somehow I've got to get back to my many cam program and get my camera going. Can you all see that camera now? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. The fly, right? Yeah, so this is the fly. This is the, the twisted sister. Uh, it only has two wings on it rather than the three, and two do just fine. So we're going to tie it this way tonight. And uh, so let me put a hook in the vise, and we'll get started. As I said, the hook I'm using tonight is a 200R. It's a long, three extra long shank. It's got a straight eye. And uh, I like the three X long is the reason I'm, I'm using the uh, 200R tonight because this, this is a big bug. So I'm gonna begin, uh, I'm using, uh, can you all see that? Yeah, it looks good. 140 denier, mm -hmm. and it's a rusty brown thread. And I'll start by just laying down a little bit of a thread base about a third of the way up the hook. Then you need to bring the thread right back to the eye of the hook. And I mean close to it, just right up to the, the hook eye. And there we're going to we're going to tie in the, the overwing. And you can see th these are just trigger point fibers. I've got some gray mixed in with the, the dark brown here. Uh, I don't know that the color matters that much. But we're going to begin this fly at the, at the head rather than the tail where you usually do. And I want the, th the uh, thread right up, up there. Oh, my. Let me get my vice better. I want the thread right up there at the head. And I'm going to tie this uh, in right behind the eye. 
And I want to kind of confirm that it's right next to the eye, which it is. And I can see it up there. I'll tie it on rather firmly and cut off the excess. Now, I'm just going to leave that uh, in place. We won't come back to that for a while. But uh, just leave it out of the way up there in the front. And then I'm going to bring my thread to the uh, back a little farther. And I want to leave a I want to leave a space between the head and where the body is going to start. That I need that to be a blank space for the time being. So when I get back here, the next thing I'm going to do is is tie in the tail. Actually, I don't think I will. I think the next thing I'll do is tie in the gold uh, wire. Just a, a or copper wire, just so I get a piece of wire going down the shank so it'll stay on there a little better. And I'll just tie that down the side as I go, but I'm gonna, while I do that, I'm also gonna put the tail on. And the tail is gonna be made of the deer hair. <clears throat> I'm just cleaning out a a patch here, a very small clump of, of deer here, and I'm gonna stack it in my stacker. Don't get tempted to use too much here. You're gonna run into difficulty as we get on the fly. I want the tail about that long. So that's where my tying will be. And I want the body to butt right up to about where the thread is right now. So I'm gonna cut this off right here and tie it in. And I'll wrap both it and the copper wire back as I go. And get them to the back of the hook. And I want that tail to flare out a little. So if I just reef on it a little bit, you can see it spreads out to a nice open look on the tail. Then I'm gonna come back up to the front, kind of wrap all this down so I get it good and firm. Well, the next thing I wanna put on here is a, a strip of brown foam. This is the foam the way you buy it. It's just two mil brown foam. And what I need is a very, very thin strip of it. You can see this is pretty skinny. One of the things I learned early on is that if you try to take a patch of foam like this and cut a very, very thin strip with your scissors, it ain't gonna work. It's just very, very difficult to get a strip this thin and have it be anything close to straight. But there's a very easy solution. I cut these strips off that foam with a, with a uh, paper cutter. Uh, you can do it very easily, get nice skinny strips of this stuff. They'll be straight and you can cut them much thinner with a paper cutter than you can with scissors. So I'm gonna chop a little corner off the side of this thing. And I'm gonna tie the foam strip in right here at the back. I'll get it down firmly. And then get my, bring my thread up to the front of the body. Next, I wanna wrap the foam and <clears throat> You might have to hang on to the hook a little bit to get this to wrap down tightly. But I'm just wrapping my way forward with this thin strip of brown foam till I get up to the front of the body area and I'll tie it off.
One could do this with dubbing. Uh, I suppose there's some other material that foam helps in flotation is the reason for it. Next, I want to get one of my long brown saddle hackles. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to polymer this back the body. And then I'll show you the reason why the wire is back there. So let me just tie this in. And I'm just going to palmer it back. And when I get to the back, I'm going to use the wire to tie the feather off. So a couple wraps of the wire right at the back here, and then I'll wrap the, the wire forward, kind of working it in between the fibers. So that I have a, now a complete body. This wire is a little heavy and it won't helicopter up very well, so I'll cut it. Now I can come back here and cut off the hackle. And that's, that's the body of, of the fly. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is put on wing number one. And it's gonna be made of this deer hair and I want you to look at that kind of variegated black and brown color of this patch of deer hair. That's the kind of deer hair I'm looking for this to get something that's close to the underwing side of the wing of a, a spruce moth. I'm going to tie on a batch of this stuff. But first I need, to, while I'm off camera here, I'm cleaning the hair out and I'm gonna stack it in my stacker. You folks are all familiar with that. So we don't need it. You wanna be careful not to take too much hair here because if you do, this is gonna to get too bulky. But I've got a patch of hair about like that. And I want it to be about as long as the tail and I'm going to tie it in on right there so I'm going to cut it off before I tie it in bring it down here and I'll tie that part of the wing if it doesn't all slip out I can get a little more in there. There, I've got about what I want. It spreads out a bit, you can see. And that's going to be the underwing for our fly. I'll come up here and wrap down all the loose ends. So that I've got something that looks like that. Now the next step in this uh, is to begin to build the, the thorax. And to do it, I want to get start with a thread right up there at the base of the uh, first item we tied in, uh, the EP fibers. Take a look at this stuff. This is called fine flash dubbing. It's just like ice dubbing, but ice dubbing is very difficult to, to dub onto a thread. This is cut so fine that it actually works quite well. It's easy to dub. 
and it has the same ingredients as ordinary ice dubbing. And we're gonna use that for the thorax of, of this fly. So I wanna to begin to, to dub a batch of this on here. And you wanna be careful, you don't try to make too thick a dubbing noodle. Thin dubbing needles, noodles always work better than thick ones, even though we're gonna put quite a bit on. And we're gonna just start here building up this, the thorax right there. So now <clears throat> with the thorax on, it's looking a little scratchy, but it's time to bring this bullet head back. So I'm gonna pull, pull it right back to the, where I ended the thorax and wrap it down tight so that I get a nice little bullet head on it. Then I'm gonna cut it off so it's the same length as my underwing. Kind of spread it out so it looks about like that. The next thing we need on this critter are some legs. We got a few wild ones here. So I'm going to use these. Uh, these are, I think they're called silly legs, just black and brown variegated rubber. And I'm going to tie one on each side. So I'll start on the side nearest to me. Just wrap over one wrap and now you can pull it and position it. Now another wrap a little tighter and cut the back leg off. And we'll do the same on the other side. Couple of wraps, I can pull it, get it into position. Cut the back leg go off. Now you can see I have legs that aren't quite the same length, but I can clip them so they are. The ones in front are a little too long. So something like that's what we're trying to end up with. This back one's a little long. So now we just have one final step on this fly. We're gonna go back to our ice dubbing. We're gonna make one more rather small and thin dubbing noodle on here. And that's gonna help us tie this fly off. So when you get, uh, let me turn the camera down a little. When you get that dubbing newt on here, it's time to grab your super glue. And what I'm gonna do is, let me see if I can get down even farther. Right below my dubbing noodle at the bottom of this dubbing, I'm gonna put just a tiny drop of super glue on the thread right here. Doesn't take very much. Now I'm gonna wrap this around to continue the thorax. And as soon as I hit that super glue, the fly is done. We can cut off, trim any scragglies we don't like. And there you, you move have the camera. The, move the camera back to oh, the fly. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. There you have the twisted sister. So did you whip finish that at all or just glue it down? No, it's only glue. All right. And it works. And I've never had one come undone. It works just fine. So, so any you... questions about that one? I don't see any questions in the chat, but um 
the uh, material you use for the dubbing. Yes. Can you give us the name of it again and where to buy it? Uh, it's it's called Fine Flash Dubbing. Fine. Is it backwards on your screen or can you read that? It's it's backwards. That's okay. Fine. I flash. can fix that. Dubbing. Oh, I could. But I'm I don't want to risk getting out of this program <laughs> no, it because it's too darn hard to get back in. And but I can I can turn the whole camera around here. That's okay. Uh, what's the the There you go. Oh, there it is. Yeah. yeah. And it's made by what does it say? Uh Sim something. <laughs> it's S Y. I'll get it. We're close. S Y B A I. S Y B A I. And where do you get it? It's not a company that I've ever uh, heard of before. I got this at the Royal Treatment uh, Fly Shop here in Lake Oswego. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the only place I've ever found it. But it's, as you can see, it's called uh, fine flash dubbing. And let me tell you, it's one heck of a lot easier to dub than any ice dubbing. Sherry, this is Jerry. Yeah. Um, Dick, one of, the, one of the tricks I, just because I don't try to buy too many more materials, if you take super fine dubbing and just, I mean, just a very thin bit on your thread, it'll hold the heavier ice dubs. Oh, that, that's a good tip. Uh, yeah. Then the other thing is when you had had the body done before you put in the deer hair wing, is that what the gap was between the body and the tail material? Yes. Okay. Where, where the ice dub is now is the gap. And I filled it with that uh, gap, with that dubbing. Okay. Well, we have yeah. a question from uh, Kathleen. Do okay. these flies live in the Cascades? Uh, does anybody know the answer? I would be shocked if they do not. <laughs> yeah, I think they, they, uh, we've seen the caterpillars. They make tent, the tent caterpillars at, uh, at Coldwater Lake up by Mount St. Helens. Yeah. yeah um, similar to that in the Midwest. Are they? We, yeah, yes. But I don't know what they're called, and I, I've never seen anyone fish with them. So that's Evelyn Adams that was talking. Well, they're actually a pest because they kill trees. But uh, somehow a plague of them got started in Montana. When I was a kid, this these did not exist there. But somehow they've gotten started in the Rockies, and uh, they're now a problem killing trees. But uh, the upside is they produce some fantastic fishing. Uh, so anyway, that, that that's that's the twisted sister. Is there a certain time of year you find them, Doug? Rather, Dick? Yes. Uh, okay. On the Madison, they hatch in late August, sometimes all the way into the first week in September. Okay. So and, I uh, need to tie some of these, then, don't I? <laughs> they are when the, when they hatch. There's not one here and there. There are clouds of them. Wow. And any little breeze will put them down on the water and the fish go crazy. They're a pretty healthy, healthy meal. Uh, so even the even the big fish will be up on top looking for these things. So that's that's fly number one. So, Dick, can you tell me, uh, do you have any idea how the name Twisted Sisters came about? Yes. Uh, Dan, Dan Delecta, he owns the Bear Tooth Fly Shop. It's down near Cameron, farther down the Madison River from where uh -huh. I live. And Dan is quite innovative as a tire. And he was trying to cook up a, a, uh, a spruce moth pattern. Nobody around was selling them at the time, and nobody really had, was tying them. So he did a lot of experimenting and his, this fly kept getting more and more complex. Uh, as I said, it, it originally had three wings on it. It had a, a wing of thin skin, then the wing of deer hair, and then the wing on top of that of the trigger point fibers. Uh. Uh, 
<clears throat> it also had um, a, a different type of body. Let, it's too difficult to explain. Anyway, the thing was so friggin' complicated. One of the tires in the shop who was watching him said to Dan, man, that is one twisted sister. Oh. <laughs> and, and that name stuck. I'll be darned. So he still sells it in his shop, and he's the only shop anywhere in the region I know that sells the fly. But it now looks more like this than the original did. That's a great pattern. Okay, so there's number one. I have to get my act together for this summer. <laughs> so here is number two. This is called Rogan's Gadget. And as I was saying to Sherry earlier, this may look to you like a very simple fly to tie. It is not. It's actually one of the more difficult flies to tie that I know of. Uh, and having gotten a little frustrated with that, I mean, I've tied a zillion of them, but having gotten frustrated with that, I set out about a week and a half ago to see if I could find a, a simpler way to do this. And, and I did. And what I'm going to show you tonight first is the simpler way to do it. And um, I want to explain that by showing you a, a fly that I began this morning. And I want you to look at the body of this fly. I turn this a little light off. I don't know. You'll get them. Can you see that a little better? That, looks, that's an know. underbody. It's I'll show you how it's tied in a minute, but note carefully the shape of it. It's not flat. It's kind of cigar shaped. And that causes a real problem because the original pattern, the body that goes over this underbody was silver um, flashaboo or holographic flashaboo. And the problem is that because this is not straight and flat, it keeps slipping off. It won't wind properly. I figured out finally a way to do it, and I'll show you that tonight if we have time. But this causes more problem than you would think. Many of you may know, uh, may tie flies that have a, a silver body to them. And it seems like a simple operation. Uh, where's my fly? Seems like a simple operation to tie this body of a uh, silver part of the body underneath here by just wrapping the the uh, the uh, silver stuff, which I've got in a spool here. When I find it. It's, it's just this kind of, this is gold, but the other side of it is silver. It's just this, uh, holo, this is holographic stuff, the silver tinsel. And it seems very simple. You wrap it down and wrap it back and you get a nice smooth body. Is it you mylar? simply cannot do that when there is that curved shape to the underbody. Is, it won't that... lay Properly, if the tinsel is too wide, it won't lay flat on the curve. If it's too narrow, it keeps slipping off and it can drive you nuts. So what I'm gonna do tonight is I'm gonna tie it the easier way first, and then I'll, I'll show you the harder way to tie it just in case any of you are a little masochistic. <laughs> we have a few of those right here tonight. And, and want that. to learn how to tie it the more difficult way. I see Ferguson's here going, okay, what's he doing? <laughs> I, take that, I take that personally, Sherry. Uh, <laughs> Ferguson, uh, Jim Ferguson and I and Sherry uh, used to get together a lot and tie Atlantic salmon flies. And some of them have a silver body. And because it's flat, it's actually very easy to wrap. This thing is a whole different kettle of fish. Actually, before I jump into this, I want to I go back and, and uh, 
I got a little story to tell you uh, and give you a little background on Rogan's fancy. Uh, as I said, some of us used to be into tying the full dress Atlantic salmon flies big time. And when I was doing a little uh, history research on some of the patterns that I was tying, I ran across this one. It's called Rogan's Fancy. It turns out that it was tied in 1845 by a 12 year old named Michael Rogan. He was the son of a ghillie who uh, guided on the, uh, an Irish river near Donegal in Ireland. And his father was the one who started the very first fly shop in Ireland, in fact, in all of Europe in 1845. He taught his son to tie flies. And at that time, Atlantic salmon flies were very drab looking, pretty uh, you know, brown and gray, not much color to them. 12-year-old Michael Rogan began experimenting with dyeing feathers different colors and tying bright colored flies. And this is the first one he tied. The one you see in the picture I tied a few years ago. And I gave this to an Irish friend of mine who has a summer home on the Madison River where I live and just across the river from me. And we fish together a lot. Uh, John Kreft, if you're on here, you're familiar with this because I tied one and put it on the wall of the cabin you rented there. Yeah, John's uh, on an airplane right now coming this way. Oh, is he? He's coming back from Hawaii. Well, the Irish have this cabin that John has rented, and I tied this fly for them, and it's on the wall there. But at any rate, uh, it was the very first colorful, full-dress Atlantic salmon fly in the Victorian era. Wow. Now let's go to Rogan's gadget. Turns out that in 1960, another Michael Rogan, who is a great, great, great grandson of the original 12 year old. Michael Rogan uh, is a guide who guides on uh, the rivers of Ireland for sea trout. Those are big browns that go to sea just the way our rainbows go to sea and we call them steelhead. So my, the new Michael Rogan tried to come up with a pattern that looks something like a small fish, like small fry that would attract these browns, sea browns, when they come back into the rivers around Donegal and Ireland. And the, the pattern he came up with is this one. He called it Rogan's Gadget, and it's become a very widely used fly in Ireland. Well, here's the recipe. Again, it can be tied on a 2312 or a 200R. Um, I think I've got the 200R in the vise tonight. Size 10. It's got a rib of fine silver wire or braid, an underbody of white floss or antron yarn. Now, I'm going to make this underbody tonight. I'll show you how to do it. And I'm not going to use either one of these. I'm going to show you a better material for doing it that old Michael Rogan never heard of. The body he made of silver mylar wrapped uh, down, which I say is extremely difficult to do on a curved body. Over the top, the back of the thing is going to be made of bronze mallard fibers. The hackle will be badger. And then the head will be our green ice dubbing again. Uh, he uh, In the original, he used uh, peacock. The ice dubbing work, works better. It's easier to work with, and it makes a better-looking thorax. So I've modified it just a little bit. So here we go. <clears throat> now, the material that I'm going to use to make the underbody, I want you to look at. Uh, I'm going to turn this around because I want you to be able to read it. Can you see it's called Unistretch? Yeah. Uh, it's white. This is not thread. It's white Unistretch. And I'm going to make the underbody out of that stuff. 
And I'll show you what, how nicely it works. Is that white? Yes, I'm going to use white. So I want to I want to get the middle section of this fly wrapped into an underbody. You could do this with floss. You could do it with Antron. The original Michael Rogan used floss. You could do it with thread, though it would take all day. So I'm going to wrap back to near the, the hook point. And then I have to do a series of wraps, and I'm watch, watch how I do them. I've come back that far. Now the second layer, I'm not going to start all the way at the back. I'm going to move slightly this way. And I'll wrap all the way up to the front of the body or close to it. But I will not go as far up as the first one. I'm going to stop one wrap short. Then I'll start back again. And I'm going to come to the back. And again, I will stop one wrap short of the back, then another layer, one short of the one previous to it. And pretty soon here, you can begin to see what's happening. By starting each successive layer, one wrap short on each end, I'm beginning to build up that curved underbody. It's worth taking a little time to do this with some care. And now you can see I have the shape I, I'm looking for. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come on to the, uh, the hook with white thread. I need to tie off this. Unistretch. So I'll get the white thread on to do that. I want to bring the unit stretch all the way forward. And notice that I'm leaving a gap at the front of the hook. But then I'll wrap back here to where that unit stretch is, tie it off. And my underbody is complete. Well, we got a comment here uh, from Meg. Okay. Um, this is pretty good. I was watching a fly tire from a salmon tying event in South Africa wrap his salmon fly salmon fly body with what looked like serger stretch material. <laughs> I have a serger. And woolly nylon, it looks like it would make a great body. What do you think? Uh, I can't see it. Oh, I'm sorry. Hang on. I, I, my screen doesn't show uh, everybody else at the moment, so I can't really. Oh. I can't really see it. Let me well, see it's, it's where essentially Meg is. the same thing. It's nylon, and it's a stretchy. Well, great. Yeah. Well, he oh, had. I can see Meg like now. So I can oh zoom that in a little and you can kind of see it. Now I'm actually I'm, I'm gonna actually know. gonna try Let to me add the spotlight. She's got it right there. See that stuff? I added uh, her I one still has the wrapping oh. backwards. Oh okay. Yeah, yeah. That would work just great. That's I'm actually using thinking. using thread here to um I'll be there. Get that as smooth <laughs> as I possibly can. Let me see if I can un, uh, remove the spotlight. There you go. Thanks, Meg. <laughs> That's an interesting comment. <laughs> Caught me by surprise. I, yeah, this was an unusual salmon fly tying event. And the gentleman uh, filmed three hours of these salmon fly tying experts. And I watched him wrap a salmon, a big giant salmon hook, but he was using a serger looking a spool it looked just like a serger spool and he was just you know back and forth wrapping up i thought well you need the volume but i just looked up the the uni stretch and it is also stretchy nylon so it is yeah, thing yeah. Cool. good stuff <laughs> okay yeah. now the original is tied with this kind of of uh 
metallic. Uh, pencil. Whatever you call it, <laughs> it won't come. Anyway, uh, it's a flat tinsel. Yeah. And you can see this one is fairly wide. I guarantee you that will not work. It will not lay flat on the curve. That's the problem. It creates ridges and it doesn't lay flat. And it really looks kind of crappy. So the next thing I went to was the th same type of thing, but in a much thinner strand of it. Uh, that's still quite difficult. It can be done. And if we have time, I'll show you how to do it. But a week and a half ago, I came up with a much better way to do this. This stuff uh, that I'm using now is called. Oh, it's Lagarden. Yeah, it's uh, Lag Lagarden. Uh, what do they call it? French flat French, braid. French flat braid. Yeah, yeah. Flat, wow. flat braid. Now, in the original, it had not only the flat tinsel on there, it also had a rib of, of uh, silver wire or braid of some kind on it. I discovered that when I use the flat braid, it's far easier to work, and I do not need the silver wire, mostly because you can't even see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this braid and I'm going to make the body out of that and I'm going to skip the wire and it's going to make a fine looking body and no wire is needed and wouldn't be visible if we used it. I don't know how well you can see that, but it lays nicely along the curvature of the underbody. Uh, I see I got a little tag hanging out there. Let me tidy up the front of this and then I'll show you what you have to do next to this body. This stuff is fragile. Um, actually, the, uh, the flat tinsel is too. And so having had these come apart a variety of times on a fish, I discovered there's a way to solve that problem. I'm going to put a little bit of this UV cure stuff over it. And I'll use my bodkin and spread that around. Then I'll use the light and cure it. That body is now indestructible. Very easy to do. It lays along the curvature of the underbody that we, we created. Now, the next thing we need to put on here is what is eventually going to be look like the case, wing case over the top, and it will form the tail as well. And the material that I'm going to do it with is this bronze mallard. People who tie full dress Atlantic salmon flies are familiar with this stuff. So you get a feather of it like this, and what you want to do is uh, Pull, pull some fibers straight out so that they, you get them exactly the same length. That's a little more than I need, but something about like that. Pull them straight out so you get them the same length. Pull them off the thing, and we're going to tie these on top. We want to tie them so that we have a tail that's going to be about the right length. And we'll tie those right on here. 
try to make sure they end up on top of the thing. Cut off the excess. Now we're gonna ignore that for a while. So the next ingredient is our badger hackle. This is a badger neck. Um, why he put a badger hackle on this, I have no clue. But it isn't hard to do, so we're gonna do it. I've just got one feather here. We only need a couple wraps of this feather. I tie on by cutting the barbules here at the end. I don't pull them off. The feather will stay on there better this way. So I'm gonna just wrap that down here. and just make a couple of turns. That's all we need. Clip that off. Clip off my thread while I'm at it. Just watching you, how you recover from a clip off like that. That's a, that's a learning thing uh, all on its own. <laughs> and I'll just clip this hackle out of the way. The quick recovery there. Okay. <clears throat> then the rest, uh, the next thing in the fly is our, oh, uh, that hackle is not going to stick put. Sorry, when I clipped it, came on wrap, so we get, get to do that again. So let me get another badger hackle. Sorry about that, folks, it happens. And as I said, just a couple turns really are all you need. That's better. I'll see if I can cut that off without cutting the thread. <laughs> okay, now we're going to go to our um, our ice dubbing. We're going to dub a pretty hefty head on the front of this thing. And that does not mean we need a thick noodle. Dubbing needle noodle should never be thick. And we'll just wrap our way forward. To the tie off point. We got a bunch of scragglies look hanging around. So I'll get rid of the boots. Right there, we're going to uh, whip finish the fly. Everybody's kind of worried. I assume about that bronze mallard in the back, but don't. We'll be back there. So we tied off the head of the fly. Some of this I stubbing is a little too scruffy looking, so I'm going to trim it. So now what we have to do is we have to come back here and put our thread back on. 
we're going to put it at the back of the fly, right at the back of the body. We'll tie our thread on. And now we can tie down the overbody. that makes the tail of the fly. And this, you can whip finish back there. You can see why the sequence is important. Sequence is absolutely important. Because <laughs> yeah, it could get messed up here towards the end if you did it. So I'm just going to do a quick whip finish back here. Gonna straighten that tail up a little bit. There is Rogan's gadget. It's a pretty <laughs> slick little fly. With the uh, UV cure on the body, it's durable. I will not come undone. How do you fish it, Dick? Pardon? How do you fish it? Uh, I fish it on a swing. Uh, a very slow swing. I do a lot of mending as it's coming across the river. I fish it primarily in the fall. Uh, the fall browns run up out of Hebgen Lake and into the Madison River uh, to spawn. And it's one of the famous fisheries over there. I don't like fishing over fish that are up in the river to spawn. So I usually fish it right in the top of the lake. There is a little bit of current there. And as the browns are getting ready for the fall run, before they go, they tend to, to collect and gather near the inlet to the, to the uh, lake. So there's large numbers of fish right there. So I'm actually in the lake, though there's a little bit of a current and I just swing it very slowly. If I'm fishing down in the river, I swing it just like you would a soft, soft tackle. But you don't want it to go ripping across the river. You want to move it slowly. So I do a lot of mending. And uh, I, it catches fish, trust me. Is it, does, it, does, it, does, it, does it stay uh, like uh, three, does it stay like two or three feet under the surface or is that what you're trying to achieve? Uh, it probably does in the lake where the current you know, there's still a little bit of current coming yeah, up the top okay. of the lake where that's very, very slow. It probably gets down two to three feet in the river. It's down three, four inches. Um, and what I usually find in the river is because the fry tend to be on the river edges. I don't tend to catch that many fish in the river in the heavy current out in the middle on it. I catch more fish. Uh, as it swings in towards shore where the quieter water is, where the fry tend to be. Yeah. And that's where the big browns are looking for them. Have you ever you tried an, an olive back and tail on it? I haven't, but it would work. Uh, what Rogan tried to do, he was just, he was trying to imitate the, the bright, shiny underside of a fry and the darker back of the fish, the little fish. And that's why he used the, uh, I think why he used the uh, bronze mallard. You could make it out. You could make that wing out of a whole lot of different things. Bronze, Dick, bronze mallard can be hard to get. Dick, but, um, can you hear me? Yeah, Jim. This is Jim Ferguson. Yeah. Um, what is it? Okay. At that point where you have that fly in, what he has now, when you come in, when you put your white thread on. If yes. you would leave a, about a foot tag on it and just wrap it back and leave that tag there, then you wouldn't have you'd have that white thread back there to tie that uh, bronze mallard down. Yeah, you would. That's you wouldn't have we to do that. We do. You wouldn't have to retie on. Yeah, and then then uh, then it's right there and you can tie it down right away. Sure. At that That's point, you could probably pattern. super glue it too. <laughs> well, to it. let me let me. I'm not going to tie the whole fly, but let me show you uh, what it's like to try to tie this the way Michael Rogan did. 
Well, there's one question, uh, Dick, before okay. we leave that. Uh, Meg had another one was, was okay. that flat braid stretchy, the, gar no. the garden? No. Yeah, and it's not, it's. No, it is not. So I'm not gonna retie the whole fly. I don't wanna take that much time. I've already got an underbody on a hook here. And I'm gonna tie on a piece of this mylar and show you what the problems are. This mylar is silver on one side and gold on the other. And you wanna tie it on so that the gold side is toward you. And the reason for that is that when you begin to tie this on, it will flip over on itself. And now the silver body is side of the uh, mylar is showing. But the problem that I discovered in trying to put mylar on this curved body is that as you try to wrap it up, it, it tends to slip back down. It's really difficult. You can see it's just piling up at the, at the bottom of the hook. Yeah, it buckles too, doesn't it? It does. It buckles. And if you have a wide strip of this stuff, it's a nightmare. But it turns out there is a way to do it. So... Back to the good old super glue. <laughs> I, I can say that. Yep, back to the super glue. <laughs> so I discovered the best way to do this is to actually put the super glue on the tinsel. Hmm. So I just, I just ran a little bit of it up the tinsel. Yeah. And now when I begin to wrap, this stuff's going to stay put. Hey, Dick. Yes, this is Jerry. Take that first wrap and go 90 degrees to the to the hook, hook shank and then start your then you then start your movement forward. That'll help the slippage and get rid of that, that open gap at the back. Well, as you can see right now, it's not yeah, slipping. Sticks. Yeah, that sticks. Yeah. Um <clears throat> I gotta put my hackle plier in this because I didn't put the, the super glue on all the a long enough stretch of this stuff. But with the super glue, it'll actually work quite well. You can actually put the super glue on the on the underbody if you want. But now this is staying right where it belongs. without gaps. Well, that's a less expensive way to do it because that Lagarden stuff is more pricey. It is. But I can get this thing whole way down there. I got to tie this thing. This is... <laughs> I kind of ran a little short, but you get the idea. So, you know, I went crazy trying to tie this thing with wide strips of mylar and trying to keep it from slipping up all over the place. And it, with wide mylar, right, it just doesn't work because it won't lay flat on the curve. It just tends to. Uh, get all misshapen. But what I, when I do, what I do when I tie it this way with the narrower mylar and with the super glue is when I am done, I still put the UV cure on it. Because mm -hmm. uh, this stuff's fragile. And if you do this and you wrap the silver wire counter wrap it around the body too, that, that tends to move and slip around and get out of shape even though you nicely spaced all your wraps. So if you just coat the whole body with UV cure, cure it with the light, the overwrap of wire will stay where it belongs and the mylar will stay where it belongs and it makes the fly easier to do. So anyway, there's a little tip if you want to do it the, the mylar way. That's a good one. So that's the program, folks.
Can you flip to your face again? I can just hold up one. And the last <laughs> part of the name of that fly is Rogan's. Rogan's gadget. Gadget. Okay. Don't ask me how I came up with that one. <laughs> My Irish friends, uh, you know, he 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 developed this to uh, catch the sea run browns, what they call sea trout, and he fished it near near the ocean uh, for the fish coming up the river. But one of the, the fly became quite popular in Ireland, and now it's very widely used just for ordinary lake fishing on the on the lakes of Ireland. Uh, one of my friends there who lives in Ireland, uh, lives on uh, Loch Corrib, has a big population of good sized brown trout. And um, he, he just uses it in the lake. He throws it out and strips it in very slowly. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's become a popular lake fry uh, or lake fly in Ireland. And that's what inspired me to try, to try it on Hebgen Lake in Montana, and it worked. The, the hackle is there to, it creates turbulence and air bubbles when you're stripping a fly. That's why that hackle's there. Yeah. I don't know how, if it's important, but it, that's why, you know, and he used badger, so I did, but you could use any, you know, you could, you could use dun or white. I, I don't think you need to buy a badger neck. So okay. any other questions? Yeah, I think uh, we've got some very nice thank you. And uh, this, this was a really good class. I mean, let me um, uh, do a, uh, uh, add the spotlight. <laughs> so uh, I want to let everybody know that uh, the next class uh, is going to be with Jerry Cobiello uh, from FFI. And he's going to do managing quill wings. So it's going to be uh, kind of a technique type of a class. And Jerry has taught for us uh, earlier this, uh, this year. And it should be really good because quill wings are, you know, sometimes they can just get away from you. <laughs> So, uh, Dick, thank you so much for tonight. Um, this is an inspiring because, of course, I'm going to be there and I'm going <laughs> to be in the boat and I'm going to go. So I'm pretty excited about fishing that this summer. So, well, uh, tie yeah. some of those up and we'll try it. Okay, it's going to be going to be really good. And of course, we're everything is kind of loosening up a little bit now and it. it it's kind of getting exciting because I think there'll be a lot of people out fishing and we'll get all these fishing reports when we start the classes again uh, in December, but we're still going all the way up through uh, April 14th. Um, and so it's every Thursday night. We're not skipping any Thursday nights as far as I know. So, Jerry, uh, yeah? the FFI uh, classes that they're having through the FFI, um, is there a cost for those or you, or you just go on and get the link and sign on? Get the link and sign on. Okay. And right. when you click the link, they'll tell you if they want money or not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. But uh, we're trying to do uh, with the education committee, which I am still on at, at the national level. Um, we're trying to, to give away all this stuff. So the learning center uh, drop down menu for FFI on the website is just incredibly good. So okay. we're looking forward to uh, continuing the education projects. But um, we do have, I want to mention that on March 31st, we are going to have uh, spread the word because we're going to have uh, veterans uh, teaching the, um, the evergreen hand and tying uh, with one hand. So there's a lot of veterans that uh, use that vice. And it, it's a work of art, that's for sure. So uh, we're still planning on doing that. And uh, Peggy Brenner is going to do a, uh, some more streamers for us. So we got a nice venue coming up, uh, great tires. And so far all is well. <laughs> so right, is, thank you, Dick. Yeah, you, you guys take care and have a great evening.
And thank you for being here. This is really good. I love seeing everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Glad to see you, Meg. Thank you, Dick. Thank you, Sherry. Good to see you too. I have a <laughs> yeah, It's okay. Well, we got Thanks new people much. coming in all the time. We want all of you to, to uh, you know, spread the word. I mean, it's it's free. We want to give our the skills away, and our instructors are really into this. Uh, so hopefully, we can keep going uh, year after year. I mean, there's no reason to stop it, even we can when we can be together. <laughs> so very nice. Thank you. Know, you. Okay, so you guys take care. You Thank too. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.